here we are. The Flare yeah. Farm Show put on by Sarda 2023. So I've scoped out pretty well all around the booths here. And the two most innovative ones I found is RC Farm at Farm Arm and also a Spider Hitch. So I'll be talking both of them and presenting you those two businesses. All right, let's go have a chat with them. So I'm with Vince and your family name is? Paluski, Vincent Paluski. Yep. And uh, you, with this a very innovative the technology that you've got here displaying at the Flair Farm Show. It's won some awards, right? Yeah, we won uh, six awards so far on it, uh, on the design and the innovation part of it. Uh, we we have actually more products since we won these awards that we haven't even entered in to the innovation categories yet. But our core our core product is our farm arm, which is on here. So this is the uh, overlay that sits on your console to control the PTO, RPM, and hydraulics. And over here is the key and the light switch on a deer. Turn the crank starter. And I just see on the poster on my left here, it pretty well says uh, what you're compatible for. Yeah, we're, we have way more than that now. We have 26 different ones that we we do. 26 different configurations and we're always adding more and more. So you're mentioning new products, they all around revolve around 3D printing or? Yeah, all our products are 3D printed, yeah. And robotics. Yeah, and robotics, yeah. So we have... Uh, an RTK bagger steering complete system. So that's the base station, the steering module, and the screen. And we also have uh, on R&D, we have the farm bot, which is a remote control tractor. So 100% remote control, just like a kid's toy. So this is, I heard it was like for when you're using it to uh, for the auger and all that kind of stuff. So you actually drive yeah. with it? The, the farm bot? Yeah, we're driving the grain cart. Huh. Okay. So we use the same technology and concepts that we did on the arm, and we just added a few more to drive it. But only in the field? Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't do that on the road, would you? No. This, not there yet? Not there yet. Well, I could, but I mean, I drove it away from my house on remote, but... This, uh, this is for the one combine operation type guys that they can't really justify somebody sitting in the grain cart all day, but it would really speed it up if they could have a grain cart and then the tractor's not idling either, so it saves on fuel. We've also sold one of these into the vegetable harvesting industry because they're running them. Um, actually, the guy was getting out of the cab and just letting it go. And then at the end of the field, run and get in. That's how slow they are, but not safe, right? So we've uh, we started into that market uh, as well. So. And you're based out of Eagle Shen? Uh Grand Prairie. The Grand Prairie. Yeah. yeah, outside of Grand Prairie. I, I started a farm there. Yeah. And what's your background? Um, Were you an engineer? I mean, nope. coming up with all these innovative things? No, I'm a journeyman millwright. And blacksmith is my family lineage from the old country, I guess, which is where maybe the mental capacity comes for. But uh, I've self-taught all this. We just had to figure it out. So I kind of figured it out and got better at it as I went. Came in a dream or what? Um, well, Twitter started the, the push for it because I did one wired in. And then I had a guy tell me that I should keep pushing. That was Trevor from Sheer Game. And I actually had, so that was August. And then on the combine is when I designed how I was going to do this on the window. And from there, yeah, that's, that's how I got it. It was a year from the tweet to shipping the first product. Wow. And what year was that? Uh, so the tweet was in, I get 20, August 18th to 20. And we shipped August 18th to 21. Okay, so a couple years now that, or almost a couple years yeah. that you're at it. Yeah, we're coming up. 
on our second year anniversary. I'm doing good. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. We've uh, we shipped quite a few of these into the states, and we have uh, nine in Australia already. And you do most of the manufacturing in in a piece country. It's all done in an Atco shack uh, right beside my house. So it's uh, it's all farm built. That's why we we uh, started a logo uh, built on designed on farm and built on farm. Well, thanks for representing uh, this uh, marvelous uh, part of the country here uh, that we we know and love you and I. Yeah. And uh, thanks for talking with me today. Yeah. No. Thanks for talking to me. Yeah. Thanks a lot. All right. I'm with Real and David, father-son team. I guess uh, their daughter is also part of the business and the wife. My wife. And their names are? Elaine and Chantal. Okay. Elaine and Chantal also part of the business. So does this look like your first one that you built? Uh, it's quite similar. We made some slight changes. We did talk to engineering. So we went through the engineering process. We also uh, gave all the information out to... Uh, um, uh, an, an analysis company who puts all the information to a computer to do all the stress testing and analysis. So they gave us a report and then we uh, also built a hydraulic machine to stress test it because they wanted to confirm their analysis. So what happened is uh, we tried it before the changes and uh, what they were expecting exactly, it happened exactly as they said, which was quite interesting, quite uh, Quite, quite cool to see. So then we made the changes that they suggested, which was adding like, uh, or changing plates to QT100 plates in the back and underneath. And the results were, turned out to be exactly what they, they said would happen. So we were able to stress test it. We were able to boost the uh, uh, gross, gross towing weight to 25,000 pounds. And we trust, tested it to one and a half times, which is 37,000. 500 pounds with no ill effect on the framework at all. So, David, I'm going to ask you to give me a demonstration, but also tell me why, what is this? What is Spider Hitch? Well, it's a product that works for anhydrous applications on cultivators to tanks to combine headers to the back for hitching up. And then, basically, you release the winch, you pull it out, reattach it, and then with control. You can be off to the side, and it'll self tie in. And then that's it. This latch takes care of all the tension. So when the rope is not there, this is the full capacity here. No pins to lose in the field. It's only a spring-loaded latch, and this will hold the full 25,000 pounds safe rated. And then this is a step for accessing your sieves and working in the back of the combine. There's also a hole that the straw can go through so you don't get any buildup. And then we also have a ball hitch option that can go on if your header trailer has a ball instead of a pin. So how long have you guys been in, uh, from conceptualization to the time that uh, you designed it to, uh, to now? From the, the first concepts, that would have been a year and I guess two seasons ago. So not, not la this last summer, but the previous summer. So we were able to design the first ones for the first customer, uh, the Lavoie Farms. So they got the first three um, uh, units. And then from there, we made those slight changes and, and, and kind of carried on with uh, small design changes. Uh, the former partner, uh, Norm Lavoie and I, we started the original business Spider Hitch and then Norm opted out. And so the rest of my family bought into the company and we kind of kept it going. Uh, Norm was uh, very busy with his farm, large farm. So he decided to continue with that. And uh, we are in the fabricating. We're a machine shop originally, machining and fabricating. So this is what we do. So we were comfortable in that, in that arena. So we kind of kept going. And uh, from there, it just kind of took off. It went viral in the videos and, and the interest was coming from all over the world, literally all over the world. And uh, so we decided that we would try to uh, see how far we can take it. Mostly to suppliers or direct to farmers? Uh, a lot of it were direct to farmers, was. but we did get a lot of inquiries from dealers. From uh, some dealers from Scandinavia wanted exclusive exclusivity for parts of uh, Europe. And we got um, 
infor, or not information, but inquiries from everywhere, from uh, Uruguay, Paraguay, Brazil, Chile, Argentina, Mexico, all over the States, all over Canada, Crazy. Australia, New Zealand, all over Europe, like uh, even uh, Ireland, France, England, pretty much everywhere. Some of them, we couldn't read the language. It was in <laughs> different languages and we, we weren't able to read the, the uh, except my wife speaks Spanish, so she picked up a few of them from South America. So the first three were on John Deere X9 combines to carry the header in the back. What's the most common use you think of ones going out now? Uh, so far, it looks like the 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 fact that they were mounted on the back of a combine seems to be the thing that really took off. That's what captured people's imagination. I don't think it had been applied to a combine like this kind of concept had never been applied to a combine or specifically designed to deal with uh, the lack of room. First of all, so it was specifically designed to fit those models and there's some tight tolerances there so we in, in length and in, in the size and everything so that was an issue also the shaft buildup that's hence the uh, hole in the bottom of the of the uh, framework to allow the shaft to fall through so you don't need to be concerned about you know cleaning it and whatnot for using it uh, the step was also part of that design to allow better access to the sieves we also wanted to make sure that the latching mechanism, to me, was crucial that they didn't have to deal with pins and clips. So that's something that you can lose in a straw. So once you hitch it up to your wagon, whatever it is, whether it's that, and hydrus, uh, some applications came to came to us from uh, potential buyers for uh, hay wagons, um, manure wagons, uh, even sailboats. Guys in the Phoenix had called for uh, requests for a winch version. For launching sailboat trailers and like sailboats basically the keel boats and then you just change the design slightly to fit different pieces of machinery or is it the universal it's a universal design we also went with uh, semi-gloss black because uh the john deere guys wanted it green the case guys wanted it red so we said okay we for inventory purposes we thought we would take a, a color that goes with anything and we did not get any negative feedback from that they, they understood immediately that it made sense for inventory so, but I could see the John Deere guys are probably upset that you put red on your spider web. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Spider-Man. Uh... I'm not sure, but it's a Black Widow, so we have a good excuse. <laughs> so. And David, why weren't you wearing a Spider-Man suit when you were doing the video up there? Uh, it wasn't the Halloween season, so there wasn't any available at that time. <laughs> I don't know. I think you should look at your next trade show or uh, farm show to be in a Spider-Man suit. Well, maybe. <laughs> no. <laughs>